Oh, I don't, I don't know if the light is um, shining down right on this camera, but hopefully you can still see me. Anyway, we're going to see how many things we can get done today. I've been so busy with work and everything, as usual. Um, I don't really have the time to do these projects. I know I say that. I'm a broken record with it, really. But um, today, I'm going to try to make that a little bit different. We're going to put aside the other stuff and uh, work on some projects. So, this morning... Uh, the first thing that I'd like to somewhat tackle is this wall right here. Okay, so why does this wall need to come out? Well, I am getting a all-new furnace and uh, air conditioning system. So the issue here is um, obviously this door is too small uh, to get to the equipment. So I told them I would remove this side wall and allow them more access. And I don't think this will be too hard to do. Um, if we look inside here, we can see the two by fours, or at least this first one here, are flat, but also they're extended, like this wall was built at a later date. So um, my idea is to somehow cut the wall out in a chunk in a nice enough manner that it can be uh, put back in place and just uh, patched up or if the cut is thin enough in a manner that it can be put back uh, but still accessible in case you know whatever needs to be so um, well first thing I gotta move this curtain out of the way take the picture down move some items here and I think what I'll do is try to figure out where the studs are and I have an idea for finding the screws so this might sound funny but I have this magnet and it's a pretty strong magnet um, and my idea is I'm going to search the wall <laughs> for like nails and stuff and uh, see if I can locate them by getting it to <laughs> a magnet to the magnet and um, that'll be how I find the screws without, you know, ruining the finish and everything. So um, I'm going to take some time to do all these things and I'll report back how this goes. So this is the method. We uh, take a paper clip and uh, poke two holes here. If you've watched my previous videos, you know I use the poke many holes method. So um, I poked a hole on this side of the stud and the other side so I can be sure to line it up exactly. And then I just started searching with the magnet and sure enough, I found a screw. So I'm gonna use that same method and uh, find all the screws here in the middle. Of course, we need to take off the uh, baseboard here, but that's just held on with some little tiny tack nails. Um, and then I'll do a similar method uh, for the other two here. Obviously I can't reach those. So I'll have to figure out a different way to find them. But uh, for at least this one, this is uh, working out at least. Now, now I just have to get the screw out naturally. So far, so good. It's kind of hard to see, but uh, I got little tiny dots here where the, uh, this, the screws and or nails are. And uh, the magnet's working well. So this is really cool. I like finding this kind of stuff, the history of what uh, colors things used to be. It looks like it was originally blue, um, and then it was painted white or something, and then it had a yellow, and now it's back to kind of a cream white again. But uh, that kind of stuff always interests me, uh, the history of colors of things. Now, I don't know what all this black stuff is here. Um, as far as I know, there's never been a water issue so I don't think it's mold. It kind of feels like tar or something. That's weird. Um, maybe they thought they could glue it. Yeah, because it kind of looks like a glue. That's real odd. But anyway, um, I pried from the bottom uh, to get the baseboard off to prevent scratching the top of it. And uh, as you can see, it just had some really simple nails in it here. So no issue there at getting it off. I suppose now at this point, uh, I'll see if there's any more screws underneath here and uh, see if they're screws or nails. And we'll go from there. 
they're definitely nails, so that's a bummer. Uh, so now I gotta think of a way to get them out without making too much damage. Taking out the nails, I put on pause for the moment, as I have an idea for that, um, but it involves cutting the wall first. So what I've done is I've found, uh, judging by the bottom there, where the metal uh, side strip is that goes around the corner, I forget the name of it, and uh, measured out just enough to the edge of it and uh, marked a line. And uh, as you can see up here, I've already started doing it. I'm using a uh, box cutting knife to uh, score the line and uh, just keep getting deeper and deeper. And what this will provide is a very thin cut, as you can see, um, without causing a whole lot of mess and um, will hopefully line up really nicely when it's all done. And I'm gonna do the same thing on the other end. So uh, I'll continue uh, with uh, the line here. Got the sides all done, as you can see. Had to turn the fan on, uh, it was getting quite warm. But now I gotta take that track off the ceiling and uh, do the same thing at the very top, uh, make a line there. And then from that point, uh, we can try pushing on it from the back and see if we can uh, get the nails to come out that way. Got a couple of the nails out. Um, it's a little harder to do uh, than I was expecting because the heads of the nails actually come off and then you're just left with the you know, nail itself. So um, what I've been doing is locating the nail with the screwdriver here. So like the next one's right here. So try to dig it out a little bit. So once I got the uh, top of the head of the nail uh, visible, I come along with the screwdriver here and uh, try to pry it a little bit and uh, make two sides. With the head of the nail exposed, it's not pretty obviously, I use these vice grips and come along and clamp onto the top of that head of the nail. Um, I get it as tight as I can, that's why it's kind of hard to do here. There we go, and we got it on the head of the nail. And the reason I'm doing this is because if I were to use like a crowbar, it would make an, an even bigger hole, because uh, you got to get the crowbar underneath it to pull it out. Here, you just clamp onto it, and pull it out. So it's a little bit cleaner than uh, using the uh, vice, or not the vice, the uh, crowbar. Got all the nails out, and as far as I know, the only thing holding it right now is uh, the sides that weren't probably cut down all the way. So there's our nails. Now I'll try to figure out the best way to get it loose uh, without causing too much damage to the sides. Okay, and I'm very pleased to say that I got it out. <laughs> uh, it was a little nerve wracking because uh, it wasn't exactly, um, you know, obviously cut all the way through in some places, so it was kind of ripping. But uh, from the outside, the line is very clean, as you can see. At the bottom, we didn't have to cut at all. And this side is very clean as well. And so is the bead here because again, I cut it right up against the, uh, the, the bead here. And I just noticed something. There were nails here too that I never noticed. Um, I guess I assumed that they nailed it underneath this part because uh, that's what I assumed over here. And that is what they did over here. Um, but thankfully, um, those nails coming out, or staying in there rather, didn't cause too, it made it quite thin here, but it did not go all the way through and ruin the finish. And that's what I'm most concerned about. So, um, I've lifted this up a little bit. It's incredibly heavy. Uh, so I'm gonna move it somewhere and let's see what's behind it. Very nice. Now we can see the furnace. And I was informed uh, when the, uh, contractor guy came out um, that there is a vent back here and uh, he was right. 
So, this is it. Looks like we got some uh, things left here. We got a two by four, whatever this is. Igniter kit. Okay, so that's an igniter. So you got some electrical, a really old connector here for like that um, metal spiral round uh, wire. And I'm guessing these are matches. Yep, <laughs> that is so funny. And I found the uh, missing rod to the curtains. So that's nice. That's cool. Nice find. And this will be much easier for them to, to get to now for sure. Obviously I gotta get these studs out, um, but with that revealed, provided this. So at the top here, as you can see, the two by fours weren't tall enough, so they added uh, to them, but that's perfect. That'll allow me to take that apart right there. And they're just toenailed in down here, so. We'll take that um, out as well, and uh, that'll provide a nice opening for them to install the new furnace. Now, a furnace in a house like this is required here in Washington, from my understanding. Um, and then, obviously, uh, air conditioner is not required, but uh, this house does have one, and as I may have previously mentioned, it doesn't work. So it's being replaced with an inverter, I believe they're called. And that'll be right outside the window here where the air conditioner already sits. The coolant lines come right over our head here and uh, come down. Um, but the reason I decided to go with a inverter, or I hope I'm saying the right word, it's probably something else, but that's the first word that come to my mind. Those um, ones that both can heat and cool is what I'm talking about. It can both cool the house and heat it in the winter. Now, if it can heat it, why do I need a furnace? Well, as I stated, it's required here. So I got to still have this. But even if it gets too cold outside, you know, that's not going to function because it needs to exchange with the temperatures. Um, so that's why you still need a gas furnace. And uh, here it will be. But yeah, I'm glad to have that project. At least that's the hardest part. Getting that wall, I want to say, is the hardest part. Now it's going to be much easier uh, doing the, the studs here. That's not going to be a problem. I'm just happy to have that wall done. On a totally different note, I have this computer here. This was given to me by the gentleman that owns the business uh, next to us at work. He was going to get rid of it. He used it as a home theater PC, but he told me that something ended up happening to the bootable drive and it just wasn't worth it for him anymore and I think he got something different. So uh, instead of throwing it away, he gave it to me. So here it is. It's really interesting because it's a, you know, horizontal instead of vertical tower type setup, but I suppose it makes total sense being that it is supposed to be within a home theater. On the front of it here, um, we have two drives. One of them has a Blu-ray drive in it, he told me. Uh, two USB ports, he said one of them doesn't work. Probably it isn't plugged in. Um, but this was custom built for him uh, for his home theater system. The um, <laughs> little filters are obviously missing on the sides here and you can see that the cooling solution is full of dust and this is a great washer right here I think this is the best type of washer you know to use when you you have no other options you know just kind of do whatever I guess on the other side we have a fan and if we pull this up and back we can see what's inside he said it was made about 10 years ago um, so that would be my guess is, you know, the age of everything in here, I suppose. We have a coarse air 500 watt power supply, an MSI graphics card. I believe I looked it up. I think it has a gig of Ram or something. And, uh, there's its information. There's the power supply. Obviously he, uh, <laughs> had them put in a, uh, uh, water cool solution here. That's pretty neat. First time I've ever had something like that. Corsair, again, 
nice high quality stuff. Uh, yeah, that was MSI. I couldn't remember, <laughs> even though we just looked at it. Looks like a gigabyte uh, motherboard. I do like uh, gigabyte motherboards. So let's turn it here. Here we have our Blu-ray drive. At least that's what he told me it is. We have two sticks of RAM here. He couldn't remember if it was 8 or 16 gigs, but it was upgraded at some point, he did tell me. And four hard drives. Um, all of them are for storing movies and TV shows and things like that. And then one of them is the bootable one, which obviously has an issue. He told me to let him know if he find, if I get it going. He's just curious. But um, other than that, if I get it working, he says it's mine to keep. So it'll be a fun little project. We'll see what is uh, going on with it, I suppose. We got the most ultimate computer set up here. So let's go ahead and see what we get. Turn on the power supply. So far, nothing. And with the power button. Sounds like it's coming to life. Do we get any video? You can hear all the hard drives spin up. Still just the orange light on the monitor. <clears throat> so nothing there. Interesting. Well, after trying all kinds of things and uh, unplugging and reseeding and all that kind of stuff, I was able to get something to come up. So, obviously there's something wrong with Windows here, but uh, what this at least tells me is it does boot and find something. So that's wonderful. Um, I do have just one stick of RAM in there at the moment, uh, but this is what's in there. It is uh, 16 gigs. So yeah, 32 gigs in this thing. Um, we'll see if I have another drive or disc and see if we can get it booted up that way or the BIOS or something. Well, I was able to get into the BIOS and this is what we have inside. So I don't know much about AMD, that particular processor, but I'll look it up. I think I got it to where he said this is all it ever did was just in this boot loop forever. Uh, but then obviously it didn't do anything. So with a mixture of uh, resetting everything and reseeding everything and whatever, it's trying to boot Windows. Sometimes it gets to a recovery prompt, but uh, I think what I'll do is get some SSDs, some cheap SSDs on Amazon, and uh, we'll try installing Windows on this again and uh, see what we can do with it. I don't know if I'll keep it in this case or do something different with the case, but a uh, fun little project. Apparently that AMD processor in there is eight cores. Uh, about 2012 uh, was the year for that. I did look it up real quick. So, fun little project. I need to order some stuff for it, I suppose. Oh, there we go. We had the sad face. Wherever this video went, I do hope you enjoyed it. I thank you all for watching and subscribing to the channel. I really do hope you enjoyed. And also please come rate, share, and subscribe. And thank you very much for watching.